guys, 420C in here, back at it again with another video. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grow and smoke videos, or if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one grow help, totally check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right-hand corner over here. Now, before we go through everything we're going to be using for the new Sour D run, I want to give a huge shout out to Misfits NG for giving me the idea to even make this video video in the first place. She straight up hit me up on Snap and we had that classic wake and bake session. She just told me that it would be awesome to do a like kind of a run through of what I'm going to be using for this new series. And the last run, we had 350 G's on two ladies in five gallon containers. And the run before that, which was the Girl Scout cookies, we had 1.5 L to the B. So it's going to be a great reference if you want to start your grow with my setup. So let's get it. Now, the first thing that we're going to be, see, this is going to be kind of weird. Remember how I told you that whenever you go to your shop, it's always good to have alternative solutions in case your shop doesn't have exactly what you're looking for. I do have a little bit of this Promix HP, but it's not going to be enough because I'm going to be running 15 gallon containers eventually. So unfortunately we don't have enough. So we got something else. There's the old trusty bag of Fox Farm Ocean Forest. All you haters out there that say, I don't like Ocean Forest, never said that at all. See, Ocean Forest is really good because it's got, I don't want to get this wrong, but I know it has worm castings in here. I know it's got kelp meal. It's got, let's check out everything that this bag has in here. Well, it's got bag guano in here, but I know it's got a lot more than that. All right, so the rundown here, it's got bag guano. It's got worm casting, fish emulsion, crab meal, shrimp meal. Shrimp meal is an excellent source of nitrogen, in case you guys didn't know that. Worm casting, baguano, like I said, kelp meal, it's gonna help with, you know, your root development and the absorption of your nutrients. And oyster shell. All right, so oyster shell and crab meal is essentially the same thing. It's just gonna give you a good calcium boost, pretty much. Now, the only thing that concerns me about Ocean Forest, and you can take this one to the bank, love me, hate me, agree with me, disagree with me, I don't give a flying fuck either way, it lacks potassium. Every single run that I've ever done was great with Ocean Forest. Don't get me wrong, Ocean Forest is great, but it lacks the potassium. So that's why we're gonna have Langbionite mixed in with the Ocean Forest. And if you're wondering what ratio amounts would be good, go with between two to three tablespoons per gallon of soil uh, for your initial mix. And if you're not using like the Gaia Green stuff and you're getting, let's just say you're getting potassium deficiency anyway, you can always top dress with one tablespoon per gallon of soil. And you can see the NPK ratio is 0, 0, 022. So it's got a shit load. <laughs> It's got a shitload of potassium, so this is pretty much gonna keep you covered. And also, you might not know this, but Langbionite is a great source of magnesium as well. You're gonna have a lot of great stuff to start your mix in. You're gonna have the worm castings, which is a good all around. Bat guano, which is like a higher concentrated form of earthworm castings, and they have like a nice even amount of your macro and your micronutrients, so you're covered there. Your kelp meal is all for your root development, and so, you know, you can absorb the nutrients successfully you know so that's what the kelp meal is for the crab meal oyster shell you got your calcium right there this langbionite is going to give you your potassium and your magnesium and your sulfur i believe i think so you're also going to have shrimp meal which is an excellent source of nitrogen so it's going to be a really good all-around mix the next thing that we have here is mycos wp now what i do with this is i take like a little cup and when i do transplant what i like to do is i like to sprinkle the transplant hole with this stuff your roots kind of grab onto this and it's just really good stuff. I've been using it for years. So Mycos WP. It also comes in like a, uh, a bar form. I think it's a different kind of Mycos. It's the same brand, but you could sprinkle that around as well. If you ever see the, the bar style Mycos from Extreme Gardening, that's what that's going to be for. So that's something else that I really recommend you guys try out. Also, when you're doing your teas, um, I like to use organic blackstrap molasses. It helps kind of liven up the soil. It helps maintain the soil food web, feeds the microbes. So that's what I like the blackstrap molasses. This I recommend one to two tablespoons per gallon of water, maybe like once every three weeks or so. I think that's a, that, you know, that's a good ratio amount and duration. I use Plantation, but there are a lot of really good brands out there. This is just a brand that I have, but some other good brands are the Golden Barrel is pretty good. Grandma's blackstrap molasses is really good. And of course you got Plantation and I think there was another brand, I don't remember, some Somebody mentioned it. But anyway, any kind of organic blackstrap molasses is good as long as it's unsulfured. Now we also have the 
Gaia Green amendments, but I want to explain something first. The reason we have the ocean forest in the first place is because my shop does not have Promix. If my shop did have the Promix HP, I would not be using the ocean forest. I would just use the Gaia Green all purpose. And then of course flowering, I would just use this. So the setup that I'm going to be running is I'm gonna show you guys real quick. We're gonna be running in 15 gallon containers, but you don't wanna transplant like really young ladies into 15 gallon. It's just, it's really easy to overwater, especially if you're a beginner. So I recommend using these one gallon containers and kind of move your way up a little bit. So that way you don't have to worry about overwatering too much. Transplanting into like the one gallon containers, it's gonna help your roots kind of get settled into the veg stage essentially. And currently as I'm making this video right now, we just passed the seven day seedling stage. So today would be the first day of the vegetative stage for the sour D that I'm Running. And of course, if you guys want to keep up on that grow, totally check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the pinned comment below if you want, or you can go back to the video at the end of the video and just kind of go back so it will play it in the you know upper right hand corner or whatever i don't know if youtube's gonna let me do it twice if you're using like 10 gallon containers or seven gallon anything that's less than 15 gallon i just kind of transplant the cocoa cups into the you know if you're using three five i don't like using three gallon i think that's a little too small but let's just say you're going with five seven or ten gallon you don't have to get these one gallon containers you can if you're more comfortable that way if you feel like you're over watering a little bit too much so that's my recommendation to you because we're going to be running the 15 gallon that's why i got these one gallon so we're going to be transplanting two times also i think it's really important to aerate your water some people might think it's bro science but i like to oxygenate my water even more listen guys if it's beneficial then it's beneficial it's just a standard practice of mine always and i have air stones over here this is the air stone that i have i have four of them and there's a fly around here kind of pissed me off now the pump that i'm using is called called Active Aqua, and you can put four hoses in here. I think that's perfectly fine. You don't have to get anything too big. Like I know they make some with like eight and 12 hoses, but like that's insane. You don't have to do anything that crazy, especially if you're just running it in like a five gallon container. If you're just doing a kind of a smaller setup, like if you're running, you know, four to, you know, 10 ladies or something, this would be perfectly fine. So Active Aqua is the one that I use. You could probably find this in most of your local hydro shops. I have not been able to find this exact Exact model on Amazon. Maybe it's on Amazon right now. I'm not looking, but the last time I looked for this was, I mean, maybe half a year ago. So, <laughs> you know, that just shows you how much I look for this on Amazon. So Active Aqua is the brand. I like to oxygenate my water. It's just, I just keep refilling the bucket. So that way I don't, I don't know. It's just easier for me. So that's just kind of how I do it. As far as the lights are concerned, this one is just what I'm using. You're probably not going to be able to find my lights anymore unless you go to like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something, but I am still rocking my ES300 from the Green Sunshine Company. No matter what LED you use, make sure to like dust it off and clean it so that way you have like maximum efficiency. That's what I like to do before I start a run. I like to kind of dust everything off, regular microfiber cloth or whatnot, and uh, just, you know, keep your stuff clean. Keep your grow area clean, but also keep your equipment clean. That's really important as well. What else do we have here? I do pH, even though we're running with organics and stuff like that, I still like to know. I know a lot of people rely on microbes buffering the pH out, but I personally like to know that my pH, I like to have that peace of mind that my pH level is going to be sitting exactly where I want it to be. And it's 5.8 to 6.8. Three. I like to keep it as close to 6.0 as possible. So I do have a Blue Labs pH pen that my wife bought me for Christmas last year. Another really good brand is the Apera pH pens and specifically the Apera 20. That's the one that I have. I've used it prior to this, prior to the last run or so. Yeah, I used the Blue Labs for the last run, which was the Apple Betty before the Girl Scout cookies, the one we got the 1.5 LB on. I was using the Apera 20 and I've used the Apera 20 for like three years so i mean it's really good and i think it's like 45 dollars on amazon um this one is about 80 dollars. this was kind of a luxury treat of mine i've always wanted a blue labs pen so i got it of course you know your ph solution 
uh, I got mine from my local hydroponic shop and you could use whatever, it's just calibration solution. You can use the Blue Lab 7.0, that's what I've used in my prior runs, but my shop didn't have it, so I just got the, you know, the one that the shop kind of makes and, you know, always support local businesses, it's really important. Let's see what else we have. We could throw these air stones back in here. Also, if you have a bug problem, I recommend Microbe Lift Mosquito Control. You can get this on Amazon. I'm going to leave the link in the pinned comment. If I do not leave it in the pinned comment, I want somebody in the comment section to kind of let me know, hey, you know, what happened to the link? So that way, you know, sometimes I forget because I don't put the link in the pinned comment until after the video comes out because for some reason I can't schedule pinned comments for whatever reason. I guess it's against YouTube's whatever. You pretty much just open this up, right? And this is what the bottle is supposed to look like. Now, the way you effectively use this bottle. I've been using this stuff for 10 years. Leave that a decade I've been using this stuff. Now the first time you're ever gonna use this for your run, you wanna just do six drops in a gallon of water, shake it up really good, and then administer. It doesn't mess, just because it's called microbe lift, it doesn't mess with the microbes. What this does is it not only keeps the infantry division bugs away, it's gonna kill the larva. So see the eggs, they're not gonna be able, it's gonna kill the eggs that they're trying to, there's gonna be no infestation. You're gonna be killing it right from the source. It's super healthy for your ladies. It's, it's not detrimental in any way. So the first time you use it, six drops per gallon of water ratio. You don't have to use the whole gallon. I'm just saying that's the ratio. Now, after your first time of six, drops per gallon of water. You're gonna do two drops per gallon of water. And you can do this for every watering. It does not matter. You can use this with silica. You could use this with, it doesn't really matter, all right? So microbe lift, mosquito control, this is really good stuff. It's gonna keep the infantry bugs away. And considering that it's summer out, I know that's a major problem. It's $20. This is a $20 investment. I've had this bottle for well over a year. It's, it's really good. It lasts a long time. Totally get it if you're having bug problems. Digital timer, super important unless you kind of want to turn your lights on and off every single day of your life. And I don't think anybody wants to do that. So digital timer, you can you can pick this up on Amazon for like $10, $15. They have a lot of different brands. As long as it looks exactly like this, I know they change the name of the brands. The ones that I have is Astro. This one is BN Link. It doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing. I like the digital timer more than the other timer that has like the, um, the actual spitting dial. Those never really worked out for me. So if you want something easy and convenient, just pick up one of these. Now I have the drain trays and these are called pot elevators. You can find these on Amazon. I think they're $5 a pop. And what, what happens is your ladies are gonna be sitting on this. So that way they're not gonna be just sitting in your excess water because that's just, you know. It, my one shop guy a long time ago, he told me leaving your containers in water would be the equivalency of taking a bath for three weeks and just kind of chilling in there with your own fecal matter and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I I don't wanna be sitting in anything like that. Always change out your water. You know what, that's how you're gonna get bugs. If you just leave water sitting here molding up, it will mold up, especially if you got like blackstrap molasses. Like I said, keep your equipment clean. These pot elevators are totally worth it. It's going to separate the excess water from your ladies at all times. And uh, it's just pretty much just gonna run right through this. So it's really good stuff. It's really cheap. It's. I mean, it's affordable. Now, I know that, actually we're gonna get into that a little bit later on. I'm still running through all the stuff that we're using. Now, as far as the lights, I know I have the Electric Sky ES300. There's a lot of great brands out there. HLG makes some really good lights. Bloom Plus makes really good lights. Spider Farmer, I heard good and bad, mostly good. Uh, they're a good brand out there. Mars Hydro has some good stuff out there. And th there's a lot of brands I might've, you know, if there's a brand that you guys like that totally drop it in the comment section or something. Thing, but um, and also I like using bulletproof silica. So this is bulletproof SI. I paid like 25 bucks for this. What silica does is it strengthens the cell walls of your like your stem. So let's just say you don't want to have a trellis net, right? This will actually make your branches nice, rock hard, and sturdy. So a lot of you guys that might remember the Girl Scout cookies run that we did, if you have not seen those pictures, I have it on Patreon and I also have it on my Twitch channel. It's literally my banner so go to the description below if you want to see what the 
Girl Scout Cookies Run look like, and it's literally the banner on my Twitch account. I think it's www.twitch.tv forward slash 420 scene or something like that. It's gonna be in the description below. But anyway, I used the silica and I had 1.5 LB and I didn't use a trellis net. I didn't use any kind of support except this. And I've noticed that whenever I used a bulletproof SI, my ladies are like, literally the next day they start praying. Now the ratio amounts for the bulletproof SI, the silica, is half teaspoon per gallon of water. This stuff is really concentrated, okay? That's the healthy ratio amount. It even says so on the bottle. I like to follow the recommendations on this bottle. I've had really good results. I haven't gone anything past half teaspoon per gallon, but guess what? I mean, if it's only a small amount and such a big bottle, it's gonna last you a long time. I've had this bottle for three years. It's still super effective, super effective. And I think it was like $25, really good investment. I wanted to mention before that a lot of the stuff that you buy are gonna be like one-time investments. Bulletproof is gonna last me at least five runs or even more. Your lights, that's gonna be a one-time investment. If, you know, one, you know, your lights last, what, like 10 years, right? So like your lights are gonna last a long time. Your amendments are gonna last quite a while depending on what you get your containers you know all that stuff um as far as the carbon filter i didn't bring it in here i do need to get a new carbon filter i do like the terra bloom the vivo sun or any of the like the black ops filters those are really good just make sure to check that your cfm is in line with whatever the dimensions of your room or your grow space is going to be because that's like super important i think mine is 440 cfm and that just works for my setup it might actually be a little bit overkill also this one is kind of a new thing a lot of people don't know about. 325 milligram, make sure it's non-coated. Now, the best way I like to use this is in a foliar spray. So take two crush it up to a fine powder, put it in a gallon of water, mix it up, I mean mix it up really good like your life depends on it, and then just fill up your foliar spray. Now, the best way I administer it is through a foliar spray. Make sure to do it a half hour to an hour after your lights turn off. Do not administer this in a foliar spray when your lights are on all right make sure your lights are off so it can kind of just work its magic that's my recommendation do this once a week from like mid veg until the end of veg do not use this do not start foliar spraying anything during the flowering stage i do not even need to explain why that would be a problem right <laughs> So 325 milligram aspirin, non-coated, because if you get the coated, it's gonna get stuck in the foliar spray and it's gonna get really disgusting really quick. So make sure it's non-coated, really important. I think that pretty much covers everything. And if you guys have any other questions or you guys wanna share your setup, totally drop it in the comment section below as well. I want this to get like 200 million comments. But that's pretty much my entire setup. Before we close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. And as I know this is probably a super long video, I'm looking at the timer right now, it's at like 24 minutes and 15 seconds. So after editing is done, I, I'm sure it's probably gonna be like a 15, 16 minute video. And I know you guys have been asking me for longer videos. I'm really trying, it, it's just sometimes it's hard to come up with content that are like, that's like over 10 minutes long, you know? But, but I'm trying, you know? If you want me to do like a part two of this video for like the veg stage and like the flowering stage also let me know in the comment section below on that so to everyone else be sure to smash that like button subscribe if you're not already subscribed turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and i hope everyone has a great rest of their day and as always stay safe peace